Have you ever wanted to raid and never only having to hit one button? Have you ever wanted to pull an entire dungeon? 300 plus mobs? Including a boss and being able to AoE them all down? And doing this on repeat without dying? Have you ever wanted to make 300 plus gold per hour? Do you want to be the fastest class to level from level 1 to 60? Have you ever wanted to spend all your time in dungeons farming gold and boosting people because it's so overpowered that you can't afford not to? Well, mage is your class. Another bonus is that mage is probably the best class to go for if you want to make friends in the game, because everyone wants portals, food and drinks, and you can supply them with that. Now let's talk a bit about the class itself. Frost is usually the spec that people go for, because it is the easier spec, and it is the one that offers the most sustainable damage, and offers both a good AoE and single target damage. Fire, on the other hand, offers a really high burst, and with the correct talent choices you can go Presence of Mind plus Pyroblast, giving you an instant cast Pyroblast, which deals a ton of damage. The usual one-shot macro, as they call it, is to cast a regular Pyroblast, use POM or Presence of Mind, and instantly cast another. This deals a ton of damage, and having mages use this on healers in Battlegrounds is a really strong tactic that many people use, since it can uke down a single target very, very fast, especially if they don't see it coming. Major Spectre into Frost can also pull multiple mobs at once, and kill them all with area of effect abilities, giving you a ton of options when it comes to leveling, and farming gold or farming items in general. There's a few different tactics to this, but the two most common ones are, you either use Blizzard, Frost Nova, and Cone of Cold, or you just use Cone of Cold and Arcane Explosions. The first tactic involving Blizzard, Frost Nova, and Cone of Cold, consists of you pulling multiple mobs, Frost nova them, and then running or blinking away, and do two blizzards before the mob reach you, for then to do another frost nova, and another blizzard and slash or cone of cold, depending on the health of the mobs. You can also use ice block when you pull, to gather the mobs without taking unnecessary damage. One tip here is that if one of the mobs resists your initial frost nova, use cold snap to reset the cooldown, and instantly use another Frost Nova. If Cold Snap is on cooldown, just run away and reset the pull. The key is to not get stressed if a mob resists. There are easy ways out. The other tactic, which is Cone of Cold and Arcane Explosions, consists of you pulling tons of mobs once again, gathering them up and Frost Novaing them, and then Flame Strike or Arcane Explosion for damage then Cone of Cold to slow them, and continue using Arcade Explosions, while being outside the mob's melee hit range, meaning you're effectively kiting them by slowing them down with Cone of Cold and using Arcane Explosions, while you are within range to hit them, but outside the range of them hitting you. This is a bit of a riskier method, but can potentially yield more damage, meaning you kill the mobs faster, which will increase your efficiency while grinding. Mages are the kings when it comes to dungeon grinding, especially in dungeons where they can just pull a ton of mobs and use clever mob pathing to their advantage to kill all of them. Examples of this is Sulfarak, Scarlet Monastery, Marauden and Sulgurub, where players can jump back and forth to reset mob pathing so they basically never get hit by mobs. Combine this with something like Mage Armor or Ice Armor which slows enemies down when they hit you, Cone of Cold which lets you slow enemies, Frost Nova which lets you freeze enemies, and the minor speed boot enchant, and you can pull the entire dungeon of mobs and pull them to the spot where you kill them. This is insane just for farming purposes, and even without selling boosts you can make between 50 and 100 gold per hour from most of these places. But combined with boosting this is easily 200 gold, or even more per hour, depending on which dungeons you choose to do. Traditionally, Sulfarak and Scarlet Monastery will net you less gold per hour than Marauden and Solgurub when it comes to gold per hour from boosting, 
or just gold per hour in general to be honest. Players are constantly trying to push the boundaries when it comes to mage boosting trying to pull more and more packs to the safe spot to increase the effectiveness of the boost itself, to give the people buying boost more experience and to give themselves more gold. I am sure many of you have seen mage boosts like this before, either on Twitch or on YouTube, maybe from watching people like Arleus or Seegers or Fair Street, so I'm not going to cover the boosts themselves in depth. However, you are able to see most of the Sulgirub boost as background footage in this video right here. Dungeon boosting has been a meta since early in Classic's life, and it started happening as soon as people discovered these boosting strategies and people started leveling alts. I do however think that boosting itself hit its peak around March to April, probably because a lot more people had a lot more free time, and during this time you could always see at least double digits of players outside each of these dungeon entrances, at least on my server. There was easily 20 or more people outside Scarlet Monastery waiting for boosts, and even outside Marauden you could see tons of people waiting for boosts. I'm not completely sure what I think about this boosting meta, but I'll leave that discussion for another day. It does show how insanely good mages are though, being able to pull basically a whole instance including the end boss and killing them all by yourself in one big pull. I think there's no secret that there are a lot of mages in Classic WoW, both when it comes to main characters and when it comes to alts. At this point I would say most people have a mage alt at level 60, they used to farm gold. And whenever you're doing a raid there's usually tons of mages looking to join that raid, both in pugs and in guilds. In fact, in my raiding guild the mage spots are always the spots that are filled up first, and they get filled up super fast. I think this has a lot to do with the boosting meta as well, and I have seen mages leave once they have the gear they're looking for, as a few seem to just raid to obtain better gear to make it easier to farm things like Sulgurub and so on. Speaking of mage raiding though, phase 5 baby, it is fire time. This is when many mages choose to switch to fire, because spamming fireball is a lot more fun than spamming frostbolt, that's just obvious. But fire mages. Let's talk a bit about this very recent video from Fair Street, where he showcased the Arcanite Dragonling, which is an engineering trinket that spawns a Dragonling. This Dragonling can cast a spell called Flame Buffet, which increases the amount of fire damage that enemy takes by 60, and it stacks up to 5, basically increases fire damage taken by 300. I believe the debuff itself lasts for 45 seconds, but it takes some time to build up. Additionally, the pet itself is higher level the higher your engineering skill is, so if you are a gnome engineer, the level of your dragonling would equal to about level 63 I think, and at that level it only has a 3-5% chance of missing whenever it casts that debuff on a raid boss. The dragonling will be alive for long enough to cast 2-3 debuffs, so to stack it up to max you need at least 2 engineers, but preferably you want 4-6 to six engineers per boss fight, depending on the duration of the boss fight itself. This trinket could be absolutely insane though, and in today's parsing culture you already know that this trinket will be used a ton. Here's the thing though, Melis can also use this trinket to help out their mage friend, without losing anything from it. Basically, equip the trinket, summon your dragonling, then re-equip your main trinket afterwards, before you start the boss fight. You see, once the dragonling is summoned, it won't go away even if you change trinkets, so this should really be mandatory for ranking or parsing. You can help out your mages in the raid, do a lot more damage simply by clicking three buttons, equip trinket, summon dragonling, and equip other trinkets. As for boosting, players are constantly trying to push the boundaries of the boosting meta even further, like take Moradon for example. At first, people were only pulling from the waterfall to the purple side, killing about 170 mobs. Then people started incorporating the Hydra pull, where you include more mobs from the Hydra section of Moradon, killing about 230 mobs in total. Now a new meta has been surfacing, where people pull all the way from Princess over to purple side to nuke down all of the mobs. 
This is 300 plus mobs in total, including a boss, giving tons of experience as well as quest rewards for the people being boosted, since you are killing princess as well. I imagine lots of melee players, or even hunters will be willing to pay a little extra to obtain the ring from princess if or when it drops, and I imagine especially rogues and warriors will pay a little extra for the princess kill itself if they have the quest for it, as it rewards a pretty nice one-handed sword. This way the mage that is boosting will receive a ton more gold per run, first of all because you're killing 300 mobs, so there's more mobs to loot, but also because you can vendor boss drops, or sell it to the ones you're boosting, and on top of that you're also giving the guys you're boosting more experience per run, so you can charge them more than you did if you did the 170 mob pull, since the princess pull consists of 130 more mobs. Mages are, and always has been, and will always be a very good class, especially in Classic WoW. They have farms they can do, in both Sulgurub and Kiraj and Noxramus, to both boost others and make gold by drops. They will receive a small nerf in TBC, in terms of how much AoE damage they are able to put out, but I still think their slows and pulling abilities makes them at least included in the meta in TBC as well. So yeah, mages are overpowered. If you did enjoy this video make sure to give it a big fat like, and subscribe to my channel for more World of Warcraft content, and make sure you check out Fair Street as well, he has been a huge help in making this video, and you can find links to both his YouTube and Twitch in the description down below, as well as a pinned comment. And that's it for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.